As we continue to cover this story, Dr. Sudit Bose joins us this morning to speak about the virus and help hopefully ease some of our concerns. Dr. Bose, what do we need to be worried about at this point? Good morning. Um, so Ebola currently is a disease of Africa, and that's important to remember. I mean, the geography is an important uh, factor here. And uh, normally, you have to be back from Africa within 21 days to catch this. That just goes along with the incubation period of the virus. So, for example, if someone comes back from Africa 60 days later, this is not Ebola. And you can't catch Ebola by, you know, being coughed on or sneezed on or through food. This is through bodily secretion. So, you know, exposure to vomit, exposure to diarrhea, and uh, exposure to, you know, healthcare workers are at risk, exposure to blood, you know, sharing needles also. And um, the reason this is getting so much press is just if you do catch this, it is very dangerous. Um, you know, vomiting, diarrhea, fever, weakness, and these go along with many other, you know, illnesses which are not Ebola. But Ebola is separate because there's bleeding from the orifices as well. And so the key point I'm making here is, you know, you, you have to have contact with someone from Africa to get this, and you have to be symptomatic to pass it on. So, for example, you know, if you went to Africa and I were in contact with you, but you never got sick, and then I get sick, it's not Ebola. So in order to pass it on, someone has to have symptoms, the symptoms I just discussed, like vomiting, diarrhea, fever, things like that. So um, I think it's important to just recall these things, and uh, I think it's good that we have, you know, the media and, you know, interviews like this and you know, broadcasts like this to make people more aware that it is out there. Because if you think about it, you know, centuries ago when populations were wiped out from the plague or, you know, in 1918 when there was a big flu epidemic, you know, hundreds and thousands of people died because of lack of knowledge. So it's great we have the media for the knowledge at this point, but we have to use this knowledge responsibly and not overreact and just be aware. Right. Now, Dr. Bose, I know that you mentioned that a lot of these symptoms are similar to the flu. As a parent, uh, and, and being concerned about this, is there a test that can be done to differentiate between the two, uh, just in case, you know, you do start to see those symptoms and you are worried? Yeah, I mean, um, in general right now, if somebody comes in with fevers, vomiting, diarrhea, and some of these symptoms, they are not going to be tested for Ebola. And um, unless there are those risk factors we talked about, which is uh, recent trip to Africa within 21 days or in contact with someone who recently went to Africa and had symptoms. Right. So, so um, in general, you know, if you are one of those people who have those two situations, you know, contact the CDC. And I think it starts from just telling the doctor your travel history as well. A lot of times you know, this is left out of the history, so it's important to mention the travel history. But the bigger picture here is, I think, you know, when we hear hoofbeats, we have to think of horses, not zebras. And, you know, we are all concerned about Ebola, and it's great, you know, with media broadcasts like this, that, you know, the CDC, the World Health Organization, airports, you know, myself in the front lines of the emergency room, you know, the public can be aware it's existing, but I think we're missing the big picture here. I mean, there are up to 50,000 people dying every year from the flu, and we're not getting our flu vaccines. And um, by not getting certain vaccines, we're seeing emergences of diseases such as measles and whooping cough, which should be pretty much eradicated. And, you know, we're forgetting basic things like washing our hands and not telling the doctor travel history. So let's start with the basics. Let's not overreact to, to zebras. Let's when we hear hoofbeats, let's worry about the horses, and mm -hmm. we have bigger fish to fry at this point. So Good. I think that's the important thing to remember, not to panic. And, great. That is great, and, great advice, yeah, we, Dr. Bose. We cover a lot of these uh, other topics we discussed on Wednesday afternoons with uh, Robert Guadarrama on our weekly help segment. So, and if you're missing those, you can you know, catch some of the older segments on you know, my Facebook page, Dr. Sadiq Bose, or... Uh, keep your inner army strong.com because our health is our inner army. So I think it's important to stay knowledgeable, but not to overreact when things like this happen.
Great advice. Thank you so much for joining us live from Los Angeles this morning, Dr. Bose. Uh, I think that was a great analogy, something we can all take heed in, and we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Of course, we will be following these stories right here on CBS 7 and CBS7.com, plus our Facebook page throughout the day.